Hello, my name is Anthony and welcome to the Whitebox Geospatial YouTube channel. Today, I'll be showing you a short tutorial on how to use the Whitebox Tools Python API to perform some process calls to certain tools in the Whitebox Tools library. Today, I'll be doing that using VS Studio Code. Before actually diving into the uh, Python script and the API specifically, if you want to ever gain a bit more information on the Whitebox Tools API, I would suggest checking out the Whitebox Tools user manual, specifically section 3, uh, 3.1 and 3.11 using Whitebox underscore tools. This is the API. Um, so it has a lot of information on how to use the API and how to interact with it. So before actually creating your own script, I would suggest checking this um, resource out first. So now that we've become familiar with that and you have information where to get, we have knowledge where to get information, let's head over to QGIS. This is the uh, testing data set we'll be using today. It's a, um, specifically it's for a location in Colorado, Grand, Junc Grand Junction. And um, we've used this DM before, but I just wanted to show you it. Now let's head over to uh, VS Studio Code. So this is the script we'll be using today, uh, that I'll be using today to show you how to use the Python uh, API. I created this uh, script uh, beforehand just to make sure, just save a bit of time. So the, but another file that we'll be using today is the whitebox underscore tools .py. This is the actual API and has all information about the tools um, and how to um, interact with them. It actually comes within the WBT folder when you download the open core, it is located right here, whitebox underscore tools .py. So let's actually get into the script today. So this is a quick script to call certain tools in Whitebox tools. And we'll actually get into a little bit of automating the task, uh, specifically using the difference from mean tool to extract multiple filter sizes. So today we're going to call the feature preserving smoothing tool, the slope tool, plan curvature, and difference from mean. So the first thing that I do, uh, I'll go over the tool line by line. The first thing I do is I import the OS, the operating system. Uh, I do this for every um, script I create. Next, we're actually gonna make our first specific white box tools call, and we're gonna do the uh, command from WBT, so from this folder, dot white box tools, import the white box tools, the, um, the class, the function. Um, that is actually what it says in the white box tools um, man user manual, and that's where I got the information from. So once again, if you're ever a little bit unsure, always check out the white box tools uh, user manual. Next, I uh, define my main function. Um, I just do that to keep everything a bit tidy. You don't have to do it, but it's something I like to do. The next thing is I do is I call my uh, exe directory. So this is the directory where the white box tools executable is specifically located. You'll see the executable is right there and that is the full path I call to. The next is the data, uh, the data dir. This is where I, I store the data on my machine, the testing data set we'll be using today. The next I call the output dir or the out dir. This is where the files will write uh, to the output location on my machine. And last, lastly, I just call the in, dir, the in DM, which is the full path to the input DM we're gonna be using today. Next, I uh, start performing the white box tool specific functions. The first uh, thing that I call is to set the white box dir. So this is to set the directory where white box tool is located. And we set that to the exe dir, which I've called above. Next, we're gonna set the white box, uh, set the working directory. So this is gonna be where the working files are. And I've set this to the data directory. This is where the input DM is actually stored. Next, I call two specific white box uh, tools functions, the set verbose mode and the uh, set compressed rasters. I have them both set to true. So in the verbose mode, when I set the, when I set this parameter to true, it basically is gonna print the update of the tool to the terminal every time. Uh, so sometimes you may want to set it to false so your output isn't as um, met. Uh, it's not printing every line to the terminal. Uh, so you can set it to false, but I set it to true for today. And lastly, you have to use a set compressed raster. Uh, I set that to true just to make the output raster uh, a little bit uh, compressed, so a little bit more smaller on our machines. So next, we're actually going to perform our first uh, process call. We're actually going to call the feature preserving smoothing tool. So I've just performed a quick print function to just keep things a little bit neat. Next, I call the wbt.featurepreserving smoothing tool. And now if you're asking where do I get these parameters, I get them from the white box tools uh, API specifically. So I always just search for the tool I want to run. So feature preserving 
So here we have the tool, feature preserving smoothing, and here are the parameters. So DEM, output, filter, norm, diff, uh, number of iterations. And I've gone ahead and I've called those here. Um, now, if you don't, if you just want to run the input, uh, the default parameters, you don't specifically have to call these tools apart from the DEM and the output um, file, as these are the mandatory tools. But if you wanted to experiment with a little bit of the um, the outputs, uh, the, sorry, the parameters a bit more, and you wanted to change up the parameters from the defaults, you're going to want to go ahead and manually do that by setting um, different parameters. And another uh, thing, is, let's say you didn't want to change one of the parameters, you just wanted to use it, use the default parameters, specifically, let's say max diff, for example, the default parameter is half a meter. If we don't have to actually specifically call it when using the API and it will just run the, the default parameter that's listed. Um, so that's um, something to note as well. And I've, I've, um, and I've just, I've reflected that I've actually taken out uh, um, max diff because uh, we, we just want to use the default, uh, default parameter. Next we perform the, um, we're going to perform the slope. Um, we're going to perform the slope tool. So I call the uh, process call to the slope tool. And once again, we can go ahead and grab that. Now slope is probably something that's gonna be used quite a bit. So bear with me as I find the, the, pro the, the tool itself. We are getting close. There we had it. So you see slope specifically only asks for the DEM, the output, Z factor, and then the units, and the, the, the default is degree, so keep in mind. Um, so here I just perform the DEM on the, out, on the output FPD file because we want to use a filtered um, DEM when calculating certain features such as slope, plane curvature, and more. And then I've set the output or output file to write to the output there plus the uh, uh, a customized name which I've named as slope .tiff. Same thing for plan curvature. We are going to use the input DEM, which is going to be the FPD filter DEM. And once again, I just set the output to a uh, the output directory plus a customized name. Next, we're actually going to perform a little bit of tool uh, task automation. Specifically, we're going to use the difference from mean calculation. We're going to actually extract this attribute at different filter sizes, specifically 3, 5, and 7. You can think of instances where you're going to want to automate certain tasks when using white box tools to, to extract certain curvatures, sorry, certain attributes. So having some sort of task automation is certainly helpful and, you know, less tedious. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just set the verbose mode to false here. I've had it set to true before, but we actually want to see what's print. Uh, we don't actually want to be bogged down by every line that's printing to the terminal. So I've just gone ahead and set it to false. Next, I've called a parameter called windows. This is the list of window sizes to iterate through when performing the, um, the tool. So we're going to use a 3 by 3 window, a 5 by 5 window, and a 7 by 7 window. Next, I just call a, I just write a print statement uh, performing the difference from mean calculation. Then now I create my for loop for i in range of the length of the window. So we have three, um, we have three window sizes that we're going to be using today. So that is what we're going to set up our for loop with. Uh, here I actually create a customized output difference. So it's called output diff file. This is a customized output difference for mean file for every window size that we're going to be using today, just so the output file doesn't get overwritten over and over again. And I've done this by creating, uh, I've done a path join with the output directory plus my customized output name. And then I specifically grabbed the window size and then I've added the TIFF file extension. And I can provide a little bit of information to update what actual window size we're on. So diff uh, difference for mean with a filter size of three, difference for mean with a filter size of five, just so we know what tool we're at, what parameter, what we're actually extracting. Next, I perform the process call to the difference from mean elevation. So let's go ahead and check out that tool in the API. So it is diff underscore from mean elevation. So there we have it. So the tool parameters that are required are DEM, output, filter X, filter Y, and then a callback. So we're going to go ahead and grab that information and set that up in our script. 
So WBT.differmine. So the DM we're going to be using is the output dir plus the FPD. So that is the feature preserving smoothing output, which we've extracted above. Next, we're going to call the uh, the output's going to be the output diff file, which we create every time over and over again for each new uh, window size. Then we're going to just call filter X and filter Y based on the window size. So we're just going to use windows um, at I uh, for those. So we'll have three by three, five by five, and then seven by seven. And that concludes uh, what we need to actually use to perform that process called to the difference from mean elevation. So now quickly, I'm just going to run the script. So I'm just going to call it Python 3. I call this WBT underscore script test dot pi. And we're going to go ahead and run it. So here we've actually just performed the feature preserving smoothing calculation. So it's smoothing the normal vectors. And now we're updating the DEM, the elevation, based on the iterations. Now we've performed the slope. Now we just performed the planned curvature. And now, as you see, we're performing the difference from mean with filter size of three, difference from mean with the filter size of five, difference from mean with the filter size of seven. And now the script is executed. So that's we can actually head over back to QJS and check out some of the outputs just, just to see. output so let's check out five by five and we'll check out slope so here is a slope raster let's actually set it to a better color that's fine so we have our slope raster and then here we have our difference from mean raster as well let's actually just put it on a little bit of a better scale so negative one to one, we'll use a different color ramp as well. Apply. And here we have our difference from mean with a filter size of three by three. So that was just a quick short tutorial on how to um, use the Python, the white box tools API in Python to extract uh, tools from white box, the white box tools library. And like I said, if you have any more questions, always check out the user manual, specifically section uh, three, where it's using white box tools and then the interfacing with Python. Um, if you have any questions, please feel, feel free to drop them below. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and our videos. And once again, thank you for watching.